Hello and welcome to Better Than Art School. This is a mini lecture that attempts to define painting, what is it, and the sub skills that will comprise painting, that will make you a better painter if you master them. Okay, so what is painting? And if you think about it, when people say I'm a painter, what they usually mean is they're a fine art painter. Otherwise they might say I'm an illustrator, I'm a graphic designer, whatever. But what is fine art? What does that actually mean? Is it just a snooty term to say I'm so fancy? It's, it's not really. It's a technical term. It means that it's an end in itself. A movie poster done by an illustrator is pointing you towards something else. A painting is an end in itself. It's not advertising. It's not telling you about anything else. It's, it is the message. Okay. So every painting, every work of art, every visual work has content and form. Actually, pretty much every art form ever has content and form. This is the most basic breakdown. So content is what you're trying to say. Form is how you say it. Okay. So the content in this case, uh, in both of these pictures, is the Icarus story. Icarus flies. He, he and his dad are escaping from the Minotaur. They're flying. His dad says, don't fly too close to the ocean. The, the waves will take you down. Don't fly too close to the sun. It'll melt the wax between your wings and you'll fall. You'll die and Icarus uh, flies too close to the sun and he falls and he dies. That's the story, right? So that's the same story in both of these pictures. The one on the left is much more literal. It's more realistic, maybe. Um, and it, it tells more of the story in some ways. It leaves less up to the imagination. The one on the right by Matisse, this one is showing you basically the moment where Icarus is falling to earth and his wings have melted. So it's the same content in both cases, but it's totally different forms. Now the form can be the materials you use, the form can be the way you arrange the materials, the form can be the kind of style you use, is it symbolic, like on the right, is it uh, naturalistic, on, like on the left? These are all um, form ideas, right? And most art education is totally formal now, okay? You very rarely hear an art teacher telling you what you can and can't paint besides, you know, particular uh, assignments, but they're telling you how to express yourself better. That's the main philosophy of contemporary art education. Okay, so another another way, I'm just trying to fine tune what it, painting is. I'm just trying to carve it out, uh, com comparing and contrasting it to other art forms. So something, a close cousin of painting is illustration. And one difference that I think holds most of the time is that illustration tends to be more focused on subject matter and painting is subject matter plus the abstraction, meaning how you put together uh, abstract colors, uh, you know, how you put the colors together, how you put together the marks and how you put those two things together is fine art. That doesn't mean that the subject matter isn't naturalistic. It just, it's, it's more of a way of thinking. When you're painting, you're always trying to put on these two hats. One hat you're saying, like, I want to get the subject matter right, I want this to communicate, I want people to know what I'm trying to get across here. And the other hat says, well, I want to put these colors together in a way that activate each other in a certain way, and things like that. So those are the two ways you think about painting. I'm not saying that illustrators don't have those concerns, it's just more apparent in painting. This is a modern conception of painting. So illustration, is more or less what a lot of the Renaissance painters did and a lot of the Baroque artists did and pretty much any culture you go to and you look at what the artists are doing, they're, they're usually telling the stories of that culture. So uh, that's more like illustration in a way. So this, this conception is a modern conception, but it still holds and I think it's still useful. Okay, so let's talk about, that's a little bit about what painting is as compared and contrasted to other things. And now let's talk about what do you actually need to do to get good at to be a good painter. Let's move me out of the way. Okay, so you need strong drawing skills. You need to understand. You need to understand structure and space. You need to understand color. That's number two, and that's really understanding light. Uh, and then three, you need to understand how to design your picture plane. That's just the rectangle or whatever shape it is that you're painting on. And then four is the ability to think in layers or have build it up a painting as a sculpture. And then five is the ability to dance with materials. we able to, the, the um, capacity to have a back and forth with, 
you know, the drips and the shapes and the marks and the different surfaces and all that kind of thing. Okay, so you have to be pretty good at drawing to be good at painting. So in most schools, you have to at least take one drawing class before you take a painting class, for instance. That's totally uh, reasonable because if you don't know how to build structure, if you don't know how to, you know, draw things, basically, just understand how things sit in space and structure of things, then it's going to be really hard to paint. So this is a painting by Stephen Sell, and on the left it's just him, you know, drawing the midline, getting all these construction lines, lines that mark the difference between the shadow plane and the light plane. And on the right side it's a painting further along where he's bringing in the light, he's bringing in the color, and you can see that this strong structural sense helps to build the painting. Okay, so once you have the structure down, think about it. to see anything in this world, you have to have some kind of structure and you have to have light hitting that structure, right? That's the basics of perception. So once you have the structure understood, the next thing to understand is what is the light doing? And light is, is specifically described with color, okay? Because if you take light and you bend it through a prism, it turns into all the colors of the rainbow, all the colors of the color wheel. And color is three-dimensional. So color is a three-dimensional concept, and it, the space in your painting can be created through the dimensions of your color. So the, the dimensions of color are hue, that's the name of the color, like orange, red, yellow, blah, blah, blah. Uh, value is how light or dark that color is, and saturation or intensity, that's, that's how chromatic the color is. Is it washed out or is it fully saturated, right? You have to understand all three of those dimensions to use color well. Uh, okay, so we got drawing, we got color. The third thing would be design, how you put together your picture plane. Remember, your picture plane is just whatever you're doing the picture on. It's just the shape that your the picture exists in, and that's called your composition. One way to think about composition is that it's variations on a theme. That's one way in which musical composition and visual composition are the same, is you have a theme and you have variations on the theme. Another way to think about that is unity versus variety. If it gets too unified, it gets boring. If it gets too various, it gets chaotic. So you're trying to find this, uh, this point of friction between unity and variety. So you're trying to find the variations within a theme. That's what creates a strong composition, typically. And so then we got layering and sculptural presence. So the way you layer paint is very important, the way you build a painting, because you want the painting to be beautiful. Remember, a painting is an end in itself, right? So the painting has to be beautiful of and by itself, right? So the way you do that is you layer it right, especially if you're using acrylic or oil, some opaque kind of paint. You have to keep the shadows thin, typically, the lights thicker, and it's like a little relief sculpture. You're building it out. If you looked at a painting on the side, you would see that it actually has these little mountains and valleys. So that's what I mean by a relief sculpture. So finally, painting is dance. What I mean by that is not that you dance around when you paint, something like that, um, though I do. But what I really mean here is the way that you, the back and forth between you and the emerging image. That if you try to dictate to um, harshly what the image is going to be and you don't kind of let it tell you what it wants, it's, it usually ends up being kind of boring. Uh, so a way to do that is to make marks, respond to those marks, let things drip, respond to those drips. Uh, sometimes the color that you put up looks totally different than the, the way it looked on the palette. So all these things, it's like the way you're dancing with the materials. And different uh, tools make different marks. So a palette knife will make a very different mark than your thumb make a very different mark than a flat brush, different than a fan brush, and on and on and on. So these, these are like how you dance with the painting, how you use the tools and materials to create something. And we put all these sub-skills together. If you get moderately or masterfully good at these things, then you're going to be a good painter. That's just the way it is. If you break these things down, you get good at each one of them, you're going to be good. And if you, if you can do that, you're going to express the outer world say, in a landscape, for instance, or a portrait, but also the world inside. It's kind of a bridge between those two worlds. That's what art does, is it bridges our internal emotional world with the external world. And to pursue this, to pursue these kinds of nature, they're both forms of nature. One is maybe you'd say human nature, one's nature uh, outside of humans. But, but in both cases, you're pursuing truth. And I hope when you paint, that you start seeing the world differently. I mean, physically seeing the world differently. That's what happens when you really start painting. So you start seeing everything 
uh, in a much more miraculous way. You see more greens, you see more blues, you see different shapes, you see their, reaction, their interactions together. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this introduction to painting lecture. There's a cat hugging a hamster, and I will see you next time.